Hey everybody, my name is Joe Piverunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanoize. We're a boutique media and research firm covering disruptive tech stocks for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today, we're to talk about a company called Bio Nanogenomics. And the title of this slide says, is the hype justified? So let's qualify what we mean by hype first. And we'll take you to this pricing data we pulled off Yahoo Finance. And there's a date that's quite important. It's December 25th, 2020. You can see here that between December 24th and the 29th there, there's a huge jump in volume that took place towards the end of December. And by the time we reached the first week of January, in just seven days, shares of this company are up over 600%. Now, what could have happened? Well, take a look at this tweet from ARK Invest analyst, Simon Barnett. So he posted this on December 25th. So seems like quite the coincidence in terms of the jump in volume shortly afterwards. And here he is saying to uh, the Twitterverse that he'd love to speak with the CEO of Bio Nanogenomics if possible. He says, I've got lots of questions and as always am keen to learn. Somebody responds that he'd like to arrange a meeting. And of course, this spawned a great deal of hype around the company. Just look at this. So in 60 days, shares of bio nanogenomics had soared over 2000%. Now, those of you who've studied finance know about the efficient market hypothesis. And when things like this happen, they always settle back down to earth because there's no intrinsic value associated with this event. Now, shares have decreased by over 80% since we last mentioned this event. This was um, just over a year ago when we were looking at Pacific Biosciences and our recent piece on Pacific Biosciences is actually what prompted uh, quite a few readers to suggest that we look at bio nanogenomics. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, the first thing that we wanna concern ourselves with is what this company does. And what you can see here is pretty much the platform. You have a um, machine, you have some consumables and you have some software. And regardless of what any company has built, the question is, are customers willing to buy it? Well, this past year, similar to what we saw with Pacific Biosciences, this last year, we can see that bio nanogenomics revenues have completely jumped. So in the last two quarters, looks like Q3 2021 was the strongest quarter they had had yet. And then this last quarter was even stronger than that. So we see this breakout of revenues similar to what we've seen with Pacific Biosciences. Now, before we get into talking about that, we wanna to touch on what this company does. So prior to doing some research, we had assumed they were doing long read sequencing. And as some of our readers pointed out, they're not. They're doing something unique called optical genome mapping. And there's a great research paper that we pulled up from some nice people in Hong Kong that burned a lot of oil to produce this paper titled Advances in Optical Mapping for Genomic Research. Excellent, accessible paper that talks about the usefulness of this technology by bio nanogenomics, how it compares to long read. And the difference here basically is this second bullet point. So when they're talking about lengths of read, that's pretty basic, right? The lengths that they can read, they're measuring that in K. The sim similar way to what you would do with file size. You could see that long read sequencing, typically 15 KB on average, while the average molecule length of optical maps is 225 K. Well, what this lets researchers do is find things called structural variations. And you can read this paper and learn about why those things are useful to learn about. What we're more interested in finding out is what the use cases are, what the total addressable market is for this sort of technology that uses a light microscopic based technique to, uh, it says, locate specific enzymes to produce DNA sequence fingerprints. So we have this technology that allows us to look at uh, very long chunks of DNA. Now, when we look at how many machines Bingo is selling, here's a a uh, chart that we put together showing the growth from 2019 to this year, they now have 164 machines installed. Now it's not enough to have installed machines. We saw this with Berkeley Lights, right? They had machines installed, but as that short seller report was pointing out, 
why aren't consumables going up? In other words, if you're selling machines, but your consumables aren't going up, it shows that people aren't using them. Well, consumables are going up for bio nanogenomics. You can see what they call flow cells. This is in their 10K. So just pull up their annual report if you want to see any of this information. Total flow cells sold in 2021, 12,518. That's up 98% from the year prior. Now, it's not enough just to sell something. You have to take in the money for it. So when we look at revenues and the install base, this is a chart we pulled from their recent earnings call. This company doesn't have an investor deck. We do find some of the information lacking, but we've pulled this chart out and you can see that the adoption of their machines seems to be taking off relatively recently along with revenues to match. Now, when you look at the granularity of their revenues, here you can see product revenues versus services and services don't scale, right? They're services, you need to throw more bodies to scale something when you're offering a service, but product revenues are great because you can sell machines similar to what Illumina is doing. They have 20,000 machines now, 70% of the revenues are high margin consumables. That's what you're looking for in a business model like this. So. You can see here that about half of product revenues in 2021 for bio nanogenomics were instruments, half were consumables. You can go into the 10K and pull up this chart yourself. So when the company talks about consumables growing by, what was that, 98% between 2020 and 2021, we can map that to the revenue growth here of 85%, close enough to see that they're in fact generating revenues from products. So it's great that they break this out for us. now. Somebody had raised a question on our Pacific Biosciences video, which is a very good one. How big is the global sequencing market? And people are throwing up all kinds of estimates. Well, the two long read companies, Pacific Biosciences and Oxford Nanopore, both agreed on this number that today in 2020, we'll say last year, the market was $5.8 billion and they've broken it into little sections here. So that next question you might have is, well, how big is the long read sequencing market? Well, there's a report produced by a firm that wants to charge $5,000 to read it, in which they produced a press release, which provides enough information for us to not have to pay $5,000. The firm's called Immersion. They do research on things like this. They said long read sequencing is a $500 million market today to expand to 2.8 billion by 2028. And what they did provide, again, these numbers practically useless in most cases, because what you'll have are different research firms producing different numbers. When you look at more popular uh, studies like this, they'll have just numbers that are all over the place. Now, because these are niche markets and these research firms are focused very narrowly, we would hope that there's more accuracy here, or let's say more people agree on what this number might be. They're certainly not gonna get it exact, but what they did mention that was interesting for long read sequencing, the Rona is driving demand, uh, Europe will see strong growth, and Oxford Nanopore investors will be happy to see, they said, Nanopore technology will see significantly robust growth compared to other types of long read sequencing technology. Now that's one firm's opinion, but it's worth noting. Now, when we talk about what uh, bio nanogenomics does, optical genome mapping, how big is that market? Well, there's a firm that produces a $5,000 report that will tell you, but they don't have a accompanying press release that provides us with that information. So it's a bit of an unknown. However, they do mention a couple of things that the technology will be used for drug development, diagnostic prenatal testing. They talk about how the major share of this market for optical genome mapping is held by these firms, OpGen, BioNanogenomics, Nabsys. They took in $130 million in funding so far. And just, I think today, they took 25 million from Hitachi. Then you have Nucleome Informatics and some others. So when we look at who BioNanogenomics says their competitors are, they list Pacific Biosciences, Oxford Nanopore, Genomic Vision, and Dovetail. By the way, that earlier mentioned a report from those researchers talks about why dovetail genomics technology isn't as we we'll say it's more error pro error prone than bio nano so that's worth a read you can get more detail from that but whenever you look at long read uh, let's say companies that are in long read or researchers talking about the long read space 
uh, bio nanogenomics is never mentioned. That's because what they do is something completely different, optical genome mapping. Again, that research paper spells out specifically how, why it's different. Now, when you look at the product on offer, it's interesting to note that 50% of bio nano staff work in sales and marketing. So this isn't a machine that sells itself. They need to get it out there and they need to get people using it. Now we wrote about this IPO back, I believe in 2017, 2018, and talked about how there was um, adoption expected back then from all the research papers that were being produced using these machines. And it's certainly taken longer, the adoption to take, uh, has taken longer than uh, we would have expected. But um, when we look at the total addressable market, bio nanogenomics says that it's potentially 2.8 to $3.8 billion, including consumables, and that they could deploy 10,000 machines. That's a pretty big number. So they've captured what, um, 100, what, 1.6 percent of that. Now, when we look at how many machines they sold in 2021, 67, it would take them another 146 years at that rate to fill that total addressable market. They're only expecting to sell 76 new machines in 2022. So the question there is, how long will the $250 million in cash and securities help fuel that growth needed so that they can address that entire TAM? So it remains to be seen how quickly that they're able to sell this. Now, when we look at the valuation of the company, this is one metric that's improved significantly. Of course it has. Revenues have gone up. Market capitalization has gone down, which means the ratio drops. Ratio for the company, market cap of $614 million. We take last quarter times four, that's annualized revenues. We divide that out, we get a number 24. Well, here's how that compares to other firms offering sort of similar business models, Illumina, 10X Genomics, Oxford Nanopore is pretty richly priced. So they're right alongside Oxford Nanopore in terms of being fairly richly priced when compared to their peers. And there's nothing saying that this stock can't fall more, but it can also rise because of the cheerleader effect and that this stock seems to, for whatever reason, have attracted a lot of cheerleaders out there saying, bingo is the next Illumina. And in the same breath, bingo will be acquired by Illumina. And of course, when you look at this firm, there are some similarities to be had with Illumina, but we don't need cheerleading. We don't need hype because it only gets in the way of people that are serious about this stock. And enough readers seem to have a genuine interest in this aside from the people that will just come by and say it's the greatest thing since sliced bread instead of discussing the merits of this firm. Now, shares have fallen 84% since we last looked. They could fall more or they could double tomorrow because of a bunch of morons on Reddit that are pumping it. So that. The, what the cheerleaders think they're doing by helping the stock is impeding it because serious investors, that gets in the way of serious investors trying to look at the firm. And if you point to, everybody always likes to bring up what ARK Invest does. Well, ARK Invest took a look and they weren't impressed. This is not found in ARK's genomic ETF for whatever reason. You can take that for what it's worth. We don't pay much attention to what ARC does because we don't follow on the coattails of other people. We do our own research and make our own decisions. And you should as investors as well. You should never do what other people tell you to do. Always, as they say, do your own due diligence. So we're not buying bio nanogenomics mainly because it's under our market cap cutoff of a billion dollars. We're not convinced the TAM is attractive enough. We don't know that there are enough use cases or commercial demand for this product yet. It's recovering from a hype hangover. That's probably the most important takeaway here. And we need that to clear up. Hopefully it doesn't have another cycle. We're already holding the sequencing leader. So if you're holding shares of Illumina right now, you're not overly worried about little niche markets. You're not worried about bio nanogenomics stealing market share from Illumina. You're simply complementing your position in Illumina with some potential niche markets. So this isn't something that um, we're overly attracted to in terms of the thesis. Long read seems to be of more interest. However, it's, uh, it's a little bit early to say since we need to see what happens in 2022 for bio nanogenomics. Let's see if they can sell those 70 plus machines. Let's see if the revenue keeps growing. If it does, we may check back in 2023 to see what's going on with this company. So. Please just put your questions, comments in the section of this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel as we're putting out more videos in the future. And thank you very much for your time.